Today, I'll share a video of me unboxing, setting up and testing a new 3D printer I purchased. Let's get started with the Anycubic Cobra S1 combo. I'll be purchasing, setting up and testing it together. I won't go into the technical details of the printer here, you can find plenty of resources on this topic. Here, I'll first purchase the printer, then set it up and then test it. I'll share my own experience with you. Let's get started. Hello everyone! I recently purchased the Anycubic Cobra S1 Combo 3D printer from a website for 379 euros. Generally speaking, this printer is an entry-level mid-range printer, but it's a closed-frame printer. So despite its entry-level nature, it allows me to work with more challenging materials like ABS. It has a moderate print volume of 250 cubic millimeters. It also has features like multicolor support and a camera. Without overwhelming you with technical details, I'd like to get straight to the user tests and my personal experience. You can find more detailed information online. I ordered the printer around 7 pm on Thursday evening. It arrived at 12.30 pm on Saturday. I completed unboxing and assembling the printer in about half an hour. Then it took another half hour to install and configure the software. I completed the test print in about an hour. In total, I printed my first printout in two hours. Let's start with unboxing. When we open the box, we find a piece of foam. On the foam is the installation guide. We also grab a three-piece Allen range set. These are useful. Then I remove the foam and remove the printer from the cardboard box. I place the printer on the table, freeing it from the outer back and the foam underneath. Then my daughter and I remove the protective plastic wrap. During this process, I completely remove the top cover. The AMS Pro module is built into the printer. I need to remove this cover to remove it. I also remove the foam protecting the AMS. The AMS Pro module is secured to the printer during transport. Using the Allen key provided in the box, unscrew the screws indicated by the red arrows and remove the AMS module from the printer. After removing these two screws, remove the AMS module from the printer and store it separately. Remove the bags and open the lid. Inside, you will find the hoses needed for installing the AMS module and the test filament. We'll set the AMS module aside for now and continue with the printer. Inside, we'll find an accessories box. Inside, you'll find the power cables, the AMS connection cables, the AMS installation hub, a USB drive, an activated carbon filter, a filament holder, and some small screws and parts. Set these aside and continue. We return to the printer and remove the remaining foam. There's also a small piece of foam inside a small white waste container. Don't forget this. Then we remove the cable tie and the cardboard box from the printer head, freeing it. Then we'll begin unscrewing the AMS Pro's mounting bracket. This part won't be useful. There are four screws securing it to the bottom of the printer. It's marked with red arrows. We unscrew these four screws and remove this plastic carrier. While we're at it, let's also release the printer bed. It's secured to the bottom of the printer to protect it during transport. We remove this fixing by removing three screws. These screws are also marked with red arrows. So during installation, we remove all the screws marked with red arrows. While we're here, I open the filter box and replace the activated carbon filter. This will filter the exhaust gases from the printer. Then I start assembling the rear of the printer. First, I screw the single filament holder from the accessory box onto the back of the printer. We can use this holder when we are not using the AMS module. Now we attach the hub of the AMS module. This part will connect the four filament cables coming from the AMS. We secure it by tightening the two screws. Now I've placed the AMS module on the printer. I've connected the cables for the AMS module and the hub module. I also connect one end of the four filament flow tubes coming from the AMS module to the hub module and the other end to the back of the AMS module. I didn't see any order here. There are four inlets on the bottom of the HUB module and four outlets on the back of the AMS module. As far as I can tell, the order isn't important. 
We insert the four tubes into the four slots on the bottom of the HUB module. Simply push the tubes as far as they will go. When connecting to the AMS module, first remove the blue clamps. After attaching the tubes, we replace the blue clamp. This may require some effort. Be careful not to break these clamps when removing and reattaching them. Finally, you can secure the hoses together using a plastic clip from the accessory box. Now it's time to connect the printer and AMS module to the power supply and turn them on. The printer and AMS module each have two separate power inputs and two separate on-off switches. We connect both to power and turn them on by pressing the buttons. And there you have it. First, it asks us to select a language. There are 7 to 8 languages. I chose English. Then it asked if it was a Chinese or non-Chinese product. I chose Global and Continued. Then it searched for and listed wireless networks. I selected the network I wanted to connect to and entered its password. Then it connected to the network. Once the network connection is complete, it gives us a barcode. By scanning it, you can install the Anycubic program on your phone. This program allows you to manage and monitor the printer from your phone. Now the installation process is lengthy. This will take about half an hour. It asks us for the USB drive that came with the printer. We plug it in and begin the process. The printer then goes through the initial setup, warming up, calibration and adjustment processes. As I mentioned, this takes about 15 to 20 minutes. It involves bad adjustments, vibration tests and so on. The printer may make some strange noises during this process. After this setup process, the printer is ready to use. Let's print one of the models from the included USB drive and run our first test. I want to test not only the printer, but also the AMS module, so I insert the two filaments I purchased earlier into the AMS module. The black one is Creality PLA filament, and the blue one is Anycubic PETG filament. I insert both into the AMS module, trim and straighten the ends, insert them into the corresponding slot and push them in slightly. The light starts flashing once the filament is inserted. Now I go to the printer screen and click start. I select the bench model from the USB drive. At this point, I realize I need to configure the filament settings in the AMS module first. Since this is my first time using a multicolor printer, I'll blame my inexperience. By selecting the slot number in the module and selecting the material type and color, we're done with our AMS setup. Now I can go back to the print page and press start. Here we go. The printer first performs processes like bed heating, nozzle heating and nozzle cleaning. Then it performs a bed calibration. Then it draws the filament and begins printing. With the printers I used before, we had to do a lot of things manually. For example, we used to perform this calibration using A4 paper. The S1 and similar printers do this automatically. We also used to perform processes like filament changing and nozzle cleaning manually. These are now automated on the S1 and its competitors. And here we are, seeing our first filament flow in the hot end of our printer. Good luck to everyone! I've temporarily placed it on a not so stable table. You can see it's a bit wobbly. And of course, there's some noise. Meanwhile, let's install the relevant software on our phone and computer. I really like the phone software. You can print, monitor and post text from your phone. If you're using pre-built models, the software on your phone is quite sufficient. You can access these models and handle the work with your phone. However, since I already draw the models on the computer, I need software that can slice them and manage the printer. Anycubic offers this as well. By installing Anycubic Slicer Next on your computer, you can slice your models and manage your printer at the same time. Time will tell how successful it is at slicing, I haven't encountered any problems so far. As for controlling the printer from the computer, I can say it's adequate. The software lets you do a lot of things with the printer, tests, calibrations, heating, monitoring the camera, updating, drying the filament, printing, stopping and so on. So you can do most things remotely. As for the camera's connection speed and image quality, I'd say it's mediocre. So you can see whether the job is in progress or if there are any major issues 
but don't worry too much about fine details like print quality. I didn't like the camera's angle either. You can see the details in one corner and see the details in that corner, but you generally don't have much of a clue about the corner behind it. By the way, you don't need to be on the same network for the computer or phone software to work. Both work over the internet. Your printer needs an internet connection to access it from anywhere. Now we have our first test product. I won't just talk about that. I've been printing with the printer for about a week. I've completed at least 20 prints of various sizes. I've done PLA and PETG prints. I haven't printed ABS yet. I haven't had a single print I couldn't complete on more than 20 products. One product had a serious defect. I also noticed very minor defects on a few other products. The rest of the prints were completely flawless. I hope this continues. I know a week isn't a very long time to test this type of product. However, my first impression of the product is positive. I don't think there's another multicolor and closed frame printer you can buy for 379 euros. So, considering it's the cheapest product on the market, I can say it does a good job. It's definitely not a poor quality product. It may not be the best, but I think it's definitely worth the money. Thank you for testing this product with me. See you in the next video.